Hey guys, it's Friday, July 24th. You hear me say it once, you hear me say it a thousand times. Your job as a trader is risk management. That is your job all the time. Every time you enter a trade, the first thing you should have in mind is where is your risk and how are you going to protect yourself and protect your capital? So stick with me. This is going to be fast and furious. I apologize for not getting a video out to you sooner. Uh, it's been a crazy two weeks for me. Last week I got wrapped up in work and blah, blah, blah. And yesterday I got called in and blah, blah, blah. You get it, right? So anyway, enough with that. Let's go ahead and get into this recap and show you some of the trades I took today. And maybe it'll give you some ideas as the things that you can use in your trading. All right. So keep it simple. Stick with me. Fast and furious. Here we go. Okay, guys. So here we go. Let's dive into this thing. So yesterday I posted this chart on this ticker, MIST, uh, in the room. Uh, it was a long trade I took. It was the only trade I got off before I got yanked out and had to go to the office yesterday. Uh, but I posted this out there, and I'm bringing this up because, uh, you know, we talk about process. We talk about looking for patterns in the market. We, look, we talk about looking for things that are repeatable, uh, keeping your trading simple and looking for the repeatable trades that you can take that are high probability that you can get into time and time again, right? So uh, this is a trade I took yesterday. Uh, and it, you know the, the picture here kind of explains it all, all right here, right? So we had a nice move up. Uh, we had this nice little resistance area here that got turned into support on its way back down. That's where I was looking to get the trade on. Uh, as it was coming down, I, I just didn't like it, right? I, I didn't like the way it was acting here, but it came down, respected the support level, moves back up above VWAP. We come down, you can see the level holding here, right? So you can see the price action. Sellers were exhausting. They just weren't able to get it down in here. Uh, I got my trade out there. Uh, it got triggered. It hit me in. My stop was back below this support line here initially. And then, boom, we take off. And I look to take profit at the congestion area above. Uh, I'm either taking full profit or I'm taking partial profit and leaving a run, right? So uh, because of the way that some of these things are, are running, we don't know if it's going to keep on going. You never know, right? You never know where the market's going to end up at the end of the day. So the best you can do is... Plan your risk appropriately, uh, put your stop out there, put your trade out there, and then trade your plan. And th this, this worked out exactly the plan, uh, just so happy to turn into a nice profitable trade, uh, and it worked out for me, right? So it was a great trade. It went off exactly the way that I expected it to. I didn't get any unexpected funny business going in there, uh, and so it, it was a great trade. Now, I bring this up because I took a trade today that is very similar in structure to this. So keep a picture of this in your mind and I'm gonna flip over to the other chart here. NTZ. NTZ is a ticker that we, I traded this morning. Uh, I got a, a pre-market trade off right out of the gate. Uh, and again, it's this, a very, very similar structure to what we just saw, right? Very similar structure, move up. Now we didn't have, we didn't have a, a support area that got created is the one thing that we did not really have to lean on uh, to come back into, right? So I didn't have that. Now, you take that aside, you see the move up, we come back down, we clearly there's some support down here, right? There's some buying support in this area. Uh, so the market rejects, comes back off, and then that's where I get my trade on is in that same area. So I'm just going to draw a line, right? We're going to draw a line because we draw our lines. And what do we get when we draw our lines? We get areas to take trades from. Uh, wow, that's not how it was supposed to go. Okay, so give me a sec here. Uh, let me zoom out. Let me draw this line straight for you. Uh, right about there, right? So that's where this thing was rejecting from. Um, I don't like wicks a lot, honestly. I usually look for body. I look for, for meat uh, of candles is where I like to uh, pay most of my attention to. <clears throat> so the trade gets on, right? I had a stop back here behind VWAP. And it, it, it barely moved into profit for me, right? I mean, it, it literally barely moved. And I was looking to, to take profit up in this area, the 309, 310 area. So the market moves a couple of pennies in my, my direction. Okay, give it a chance. And then what does it do? It just starts to fall. It falls back through VWAP and I respect my stop. This is what you do. You plan your trade you respect your stock. Your number one job is a risk manager. You got to manage your risk and protect your capital at all costs. So I start the day out red, right? But I don't care. You know why I don't care? 
I don't care because it worked out according to plan. It, it did, you know, obviously not what I wanted it to do, right? We always want to have the profitable trade. The expectation is that we're going to have a profitable trade, but we have a protection plan in place in the event that it doesn't work out. And so big deal. I get stopped out and I walk on and I move on and I look for my next trade setup and I wait for my lines to come into play. So NTZ, that was the only trade I took in this guy and I left it alone. Uh, and again, it's similar structure to what we saw with the uh, MIST trade from yesterday. You know, it comes up, comes back down, creates a support level, and sometimes we'll get that bounce off and a push back up into the highs. Uh, and then it'll either just keep on pressing, like we had some runners that ran earlier this week that were just absolutely nuts. Uh, and then other times it'll just die off, kind of like NTZ did today. Okay, so it, it goes up, does this thing, and it just, just rolls off, right? And uh, and for me, this that was enough for me for this one today. It just didn't have uh, a lot of structure that that I like to see uh, in my trades, right? So, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I didn't I didn't like the way this guy was was moving after the open. I didn't like the lines. Uh, was it tradable? Absolutely, 100%. There are tradable opportunities in here. Uh, matter of fact, one of my tabs, Kevin. My man uh, took a trade in here today and, uh, and and got off a nice little trade. So it's okay. Uh, it just didn't work out for me. Maybe it worked out for you. Now, let me move on to another ticker here. ENT. ENT was another uh, ticker that I traded this morning and found some really nice opportunities. Uh, so ENT, pre-market, same thing, right? Uh, MIST from yesterday. I'll pull it up again because it's, it's just an example. It runs up, creates a level, pulls back to that level, bounces off that level, right? Repeatable patterns. This is what we're looking for. And that's what I'm looking for in here. Now, unfortunately, I took a, I took a FOMO entry initially, right? So I saw the stall happening up in here, thinking that it's not going to make it back down into this uh, prior, prior resistance level turning into support. So again, I'm going to draw a line. And I draw these lines so that you guys can see how I drop them in here. They're already on my charts when I'm draw when I'm trading, but uh, I clear some stuff out so that I can put these markings on here so you guys can kind of see, be in the mind or you know see the mindset as things are unfolding kind of a thing. So we get the pop up through resistance. It comes back. I put a FOMO trade on small size, super small size, right? My stop is back here to look, uh, behind VWAP, so super safe. I'm not concerned. I'm not worried. It rolls back into where? Oh yeah, my line, right? And then. I get on a little extra size and I take the bounce. So I follow the bounce up and I see the rejection and it pushes back up. So I take profit where at the congestion area, right? So that's where I'm taking my profit. I get out of the trade and I wait and see what happens next. Because what do we have now? We have yet another area that gets generated here. Oh man, I did it again. Here we go. I'm not gonna, oh crap, okay. This happens to me all the time because I got fat fingers. Um, let me just scroll over, blah, 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 blah. Let me take my line and strong way up to the sky and bring it back down where it's supposed to be. Okay, so we have a resistance level that gets generated here, right? What happens? We crack that resistance. Nice momentum back up into the current pre market highs. And what do we do? We see it pushing back down into that level. So that's where I get my trade on. Boom, I get on, I get out. Where? In congestion, up here near the highs of the days, because we don't know how far it's going to go. It could chug and run for days, or it could just fail and fall over and leave you hanging, right? So, and one last long trade, uh, same exact setup, right? And for this trade here, where was my stop? Back here behind the previous higher low. I keep my trading simple, right? My stop areas are well defined. I know where they're going. Uh, I have a, a really keen idea of what the distance is between my level because I know where the support was or where the support is going to be, where I expect it to be. I know where my stop level is going to be. So I already have my range for what my risk is. And then I can place my trade size according to my risk that allows me to get the trade on safely and I can manage my risk capital along the way. So the last trade I hear for the long, I get in, boom, 
and off we go. Where do I take profit? At congestion, because I see it struggling, right? I see it struggling to get up in there, so I just take the trade off, and I'm out. Quick scalp, easy trade. Now, we push up, and then what happens? We get a nice stuff. Look at the volume in this candle, right? Right out of the open, we get a nice push up, we break the highs, new market high for the day, and then we roll right back down. So I take the trade short at the line, right? It just turns out that the open is that line. Uh, I'm gonna draw the line on here just so that we have it. Because we can say we did, right? There we go. And that line comes into play multiple times, even later in the day, right? Now this is pretty close to zombie time, so you know I walked away basically after uh, these last couple of trade sequences here. So I took this trade to the short side, got a little size on, added a little bit to my winner, and then where did I take profit? Nail and bail at VWAP. This is technically still front side. This is a front side move because the stock is not yet broken. Front side shorts require front side covers. Nail and bail, man. Don't sit around and look for the all day fader because you don't know that it's coming. You don't know if it's coming, it may never come. So short trade here, we had to spike up right back down. That's a bit of a stuff move there. Big volume, couldn't hold those highs. We roll back up in that area, take the short, boom, boom, and I cover. What happens next? The market bounces off of VWAP, pushes up, cannot make a new high of day. Now, why is that important? It's important because look at the volume that occurred in that bar, right? The largest volume candle of the day thus far, and it can't make a new high. And it immediately rolls right back over and stuffs, right? This is the kind of move that we're looking for. We always look for this momentum stuff move and then trade the pop back up into an area and then take the short. Now, that's exactly what I did. However, what you can't see in this two minute candle, two minute time frame, is the retrace back up. Right here, it looks like I chased the move. But let me zip into a one minute chart here for you and zoom into that area. And you can see the one minute stuff, boom. What do we do? We retrace back up into the line. We hit VWAP, boom, boom, trade area. And I took the first profit target here. Now I'm safe, right? So. Here's, here's a tip for you guys, right? I'm taking this trade here. Where's my stop? My stop is back here above the high, these highs. Uh, let me draw a little trend line here. And this is something that you can use. It's a piece of information that uh, you may not have come across previously. But if my stop is back here, and let's just say hypothetically, um, I've got 200 shares on at this location. If I take off 50% of my shares, and we're just gonna use some quick numbers here. We're gonna call this at six. I got in at six even, and let's say I got out down here at 580. That's a 20 cent move. If I take a 20 cent move and take 50% of my profit, I can move my stop back here to minus 10 cents. So at 610, because if six is my entry, 610 is a stop. If I move my stop back here, and I get stopped out, I still technically took 10 cents off of 100 shares, right? Or I can move my stop right down in here to break even, and I'm gonna get, still, I get stopped out, but I've protected my profit. I move my stops um, when, I'm, when I'm trading. I'm very defensive, you guys hear me say this all the time, I'm a defensive trader. The uh, market moves in my direction. Once it moves in my direction, and I've got some, some profit in the game, I'm not letting a winner turn into a loser. I don't, it, it's not worth it, right? I could take the trade off and then reattack it if the things if things work out. You can always get back in. But if you're in and this thing starts to move against you and keeps on going, it could climb and climb and climb and come back and stop you out for max stop on that one trade. When really, once it moves into profit, now you can move your stop down, even if I didn't take profit here. I could still reduce my risk behind VWAP at that point, right? So just some ideas of, of things that you guys might be able to use and in your own trading. Okay, so this trade gets on, boom, the stuff move, get in on a pop, get back out, right? And I took the rest off down over here. And 
it's no coincidence that I'm taking these trades off here at prior lines, right? These are prior support areas that I expect the market to stall at. And that's where I ended up taking that last piece of that trade off. So uh, you'll, you'll also notice if you go back in the main room, I posted a chart. Val was talking about this guy. Uh, it, it was kind of directionless uh, in the, oh, I don't know. Uh, let's see, about 11, 15 time frame is when that post went on. So I'm gonna zoom out here a little bit and scroll over so we can get that area in there. And it, it this thing was just in a kind of a, a directionless zigzag area, right? Now, if I zoom out a bit more and I just move these lines to be in coordination with what we see forming in the chart, we've got a low there, let me get rid of this other line, get rid of B there, get rid of that one, and take this one and throw it right in here. Right, so if even if it, it, eliminate this high here, you can see the channel. This thing is just like it's directionless. This is where uh, you know you see Bal will trade these channels. He's really good at it, man. He's really good at, at, at just trading these channels and taking uh, these these extreme sides of the channel on the short side. That's his thing, man. That's that's one of the things he's really good at. I'm not as good at it. I'm practicing it, I'm trying to get better at it and have something to add to my trading toolbox. But for now, I stick to my bread and butter trades, I stick to the things I know, I stick to the repeatable patterns I see all the time, and that's what I go for. So uh, this thing just kind of meandered on and just did this thing for you know, pretty much uh, the rest of this morning here. And then, you know, you, you gotta wait for it to break. Wait for it to, to get out of this range or leave it alone. Don't, don't be chasing these things expecting or that you're just gonna get on and this thing's gonna fade all day long. Cause look what happened, right? If you'd have gotten in up here and expected this thing to fade all day, it sat in this range almost all morning, mid afternoon, right in the reversal times. Now, once you get this big old stuff candle down here uh, and then it didn't really crack support, right? Just kind of bounced around there and then boom, then it, then it tanks and takes out the support level. So then you could look at this support levels being resistance to the upside uh, and take a possible short from there. and yeah, there could have been an opportunity there for you. So, so there you go, guys. Fast and furious. At least I think it was fast. Quick recap. Um, I hope this guy this this gives you guys a little bit of information, some things you can add in your toolbox. I hope it lets you see a little bit into my mind and the things that I look for when I'm trading and how I manage things. If you have questions, shoot them over. Happy to answer them. Other than that, have a great weekend. Enjoy yourselves. Enjoy the weather. Enjoy your families, and we will get back to it next week. See you guys.